Right now we're in front of Madison Square Garden. The gym is one block from here. We live one block from here. It was too bad that we can't fight here. One day, hopefully, we'll be able to represent and fight in New York City. The three Gracie brothers are a part of the royal family in mixed martial arts. The family who pioneered the sport. And they train in the backdrop of Madison Square Garden at their cousin's gym, the world famous Henzo Gracie Academy. We build a lot of champions on this place. You can come here at any given day and you have two, three UFC champions to train with. New York is home to other premier fight teams. Out in Long Island is perhaps the most trophied one. Former UFC champion Matt Serra, alongside legendary striking coach Ray Longo. Battle right there, turn your left shoulder forward. Have formed a talented fight team with championship potential. We got a wrecking crew here. Of course, Chris Weidman. We had Costa Salipu. We got some young guys coming up. Ray handles the stand-up, the striking. That's his expertise. Myself, I cover the guys with the groundwork, the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Across the river in New Jersey, AMA Fight Club is the best in the state. AMA is home to multiple UFC fighters, headlined by the Miller brothers, Dan and Jim. We are the only gym in New Jersey with multiple UFC fighters. So right now we have seven active, and I truly believe that the team camaraderie is the key to success in this game. The talent pool in New York is undeniable, but New York has yet to sanction professional MMA. And the fighters of the area have yet to have the opportunity to fight in their own backyard on the world's grandest stage. New York-based fighters are always the visiting team. They're always traveling somewhere else to fight. They can't fight in their hometown. And they will all tell you, I want to fight at the Garden. I want to fight in New York. Tons of famous boxing cards have happened in Madison Square Garden. And to be part of that history is really something that these guys would love to do. This thing gets legal in New York, and I get a chance to fight at MSG, that would be a dream come true. With all that fight history there, Ali, Frazier, that would be a great way to close the show. New York is one of only four states that does not allow mixed martial arts. An argument that has been fought publicly on the political battlefield in Albany. For the past few years, Bob Riley, he's been the most vocal opponent against mixed martial arts being legalized in New York State. In these committees where the, the bill to legalize the sport, I mean, he was able to stand up and say, this is barbaric, you know, we can't have this in our state. And unfortunately that was enough to put the kibosh in the bill for the past few years. A lot of people talk about the brutality of MMA. And yes, it's a violent sport. It's fighting, it's punching, it's kicking. But if you really watch it, it's not more violent than football. It's no more violent than boxing. There's certainly an educational process that needs to happen with politicians. It almost shocks me, a state like New York that has some of the most progressive things in the entire world that we're still a little bit behind in MMA. It's accepted as a great discipline around the world. It's accepted as not something that's incredibly dangerous. Be forewarned, there are no rules, no judges scores, and no time limits. MMA in 1993 is very different than what it is now. It wasn't even called mixed martial arts back then. It was called you know, ultimate fighting, no holds barred. There were very few rules, there were no weight classes, it was pretty much anything goes. It was spectacle, not sport. 2001, the unified rules of MMA were adopted, which really cleaned up the sport and made it what it is today. You have weight classes, you have got, you know, 155 pound guys fight 155 pound guys. And that really is where the sport started to evolve, to become a real sport, to become something that would become mainstream. The sport once shunned on a national platform is now comprised of artists who have mastered many crafts. The sport's been around for roughly 20 years where every fighter knows Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, they know wrestling, they know boxing, they know Muay Thai, they know kickboxing. You don't have the sort of one discipline specialist that you had even five years ago. It's important to put everything together and that's what MMA is doing today, you know, it's, uh, it's one art. And it's evolving every day, it's getting better every day. The kids are able to achieve levels in two, three years that people before had to take 15, 20 years to achieve. Henzo is well versed in the evolution of the sport. The Gracie family are considered the pioneers. 
Up next, we go to the world-famous Henzo Gracie Academy, located in the heart of Manhattan. In the shadow of Madison Square Garden is the world-famous Henzo Gracie Academy. Now I have freedom with this elbow and rock his hip. Henzo is the grandson of Carlos Gracie, the man who created Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu after learning techniques from the Japanese in the early 1900s. The master of Jiu-Jitsu came from Japan. Once my grandfather learned, he passed along to his brother. The first generation of my family all average 110, 105 pounds. So they really had to develop the technique in order to stop the heavier opponents. And they were able to come up with the guard. The guard consists of using your legs like arms you know, to defend yourself. Constant uh, hip skate, hip movement. And was created one of the most efficient martial arts out there, you know, it's the best way of defending yourself. Henzo was regarded as one of the premier trainers in the world, but he defined his legacy in the cage. For decades, Henzo and the Gracie family proved Brazilian Jiu Jitsu was the dominant martial art. The sport is dominated by you know the Gracie clan and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and that's because you know no one really knew how to grapple uh, as effectively as they did. No one was able to you know control fights and finish fights in such a fashion. I think the Gracie name is the spinal cord of this whole sport. It's the base. Like there's no fighter without Gracie Jiu-Jitsu who can get in there and be successful. I, I think we brought the biggest revolution in martial arts after Bruce Lee. The Gracie family, which is sort of the first family of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, every mixed martial artist will tell you they got into this by watching the Gracies. That hook stops working because my knee's close to him. If he blocks the mouth with his hand, boom, I pass the guard look. Bring it in, elbow tight on the hip. My body moves, look, to the side. I move to the side without moving back, right here. That's a game that you could compare Jiu-Jitsu, it would be chess. It's something that you have to think far ahead your opponent in order to trap him, you know, to set him up for a checkmate in chess. For us, it's to a submission, you know, to, to make your opponent give up, force him to do the three taps. You see, so this, you guys work next time, it's going to improve the game a lot. His school is deep, rich in history. I remember when Henzo first came to New York. This was back in 94, 95, and the only place that you could legitimately train for you know, MMA was at Henzo's. So Henzo is really the godfather of all MMA training in New York, New Jersey area, even you know, further than that. This school that I was able to build right next to Madison Square Garden was a dream come true. You know? like, this is the school that I, my whole life I dream into training at. And now I'm fortunate enough to have my cousins, my relatives training here. The three Gracie brothers, Holes, Igor, and Gregor, are the next in line in representing MMA's first family. And they look to add to the legacy of the Gracie name. To be a Gracie, when you step in the ring, you're not fighting just for yourself, you know? You're fighting for a whole generation, a whole lifetime of guys who came before me, you know? My, my grandfather, my uncles, my cousins. It's amazing, not only to follow the footsteps of my family members, but to be actually like doing it with, alongside with my brothers. It's unbelievable. I'm just honored to be part of the uh, Hansel Gracie Academy. We got a strong team. We have like a big names fighting out of this, this camp. You know, Frank Edgar, GSP comes down to train with us. We got me and my brothers. Enzo Gracie's Academy is the premier gym in New York City for mixed martial arts and with the, with the focus being on submissions and jiu-jitsu. We have guys flying from all over the world just to train here. Henzo has impacted many fighters, none more successful than his first American black belt, former UFC champion Matt Serra, who now runs his own gym in Long Island. I bridge up and over his head. Use my unhook to punch down. Up next, we go out to Long Island for an all-access look at the Serra Longo fight team.
Across the bridge in Long Island, you will find one of the biggest names in MMA history, Matt Serra, the former UFC champion who mastered Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu under the tutelage of Henzo Gracie, a relationship that seemed destined. My father showed me a tape called Gracie in Action. This was like 92, right before the first UFC. I fell in love with Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, that's what I wanted to do. When I moved to New York, one of the guys that right away outshined all the others was Matt Serra. His passion for the sport, his belief that he could become a champion was always there, you know, and uh, he's a guy that I'm very proud of. I'm still part of Team Henzo Gracie. I will be to the day I die. Henzo's my instructor. He's my sensei. I'm the first American black belt on the Henzo Gracie. 20 punches. Longo is my coach with my striking, and he brought me up. So what Henzo did to me, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, Longo did for me with my hands and my legs and my knees and my elbows. Come on, pop, pop the jib, pop it. You ask anybody when Matt Serra was a kid, he was a juggernaut man on the mat. He really was. He was, you know, he'd be attacking you one right after another. Over the years, I got so much sparring in that I felt real comfortable with it, man. If I'm hurting guys, I. One time sparring at Henzel's, I, I broke a guy's jaw with 16 ounce gloves. It was Ray's striking influence on Matt that would help define his career. As they game planned around his newly refined skill when fighting the overwhelming favorite, George St. Pierre. Longo, you know, we decided, hey man, with St. Pierre, he fought a lot better wrestlers than myself. So I'm like, man, if I'm fighting this guy for five rounds, he knows I'm a jiu-jitsu guy, I might have to just roll the dice, man, and Take my chance of standing up, try to hurt him. He hurt him again, he hurt him again. He hurt him again, he hurt him again. St. Pierre is buckled. Darren is trying to upset St. Pierre. And it's over, over. Believe the box. Sarah is the new welterweight champion of the world. The biggest upset in UFC history, because I was known as being that jiu-jitsu guy, and I ended up winning with my Ray Longo overhand. It was a good day in the office. Sarah and Longo have since created a fight team the lethal combination of Matt teaching the ground game and Ray coaching the stand-ups. The two have joined forces to manage some of the best talent in New York. Now, Long Island is well represented. I mean, I know in this gym alone, we have Ally Quinto, we have Costa Filippo, and we have Mr. Chris, the old American white man. There's a guy that he's not happy until he's smashing your head right into the canvas. I wrestled at Hofstra University. I coached there, and after I got done coaching there, I tried out for the Olympic team in 2008. After that didn't work out, I headed right over to Ray Longo's. And if you were in the Long Island area, there's only two schools that, that I really even thought about going to, is Matt Serra's and Ray Longo's. When he doesn't, he'll actually be stretching you out, okay? It'll help you out. There's some guys that just come so naturally to uh, jiu-jitsu, like Chris Weidman. It was like a fish to water. I don't know if it was his wrestling background, but he just took right to it. I like helping out the younger guys, man. It's like the Lion King. It's a circle of life. And I'm a branch off Henzo's tree, so they're learning Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu the right way. Matt obviously is a world champion. That's something that I want to achieve. So to have a guy like that around me and him being able to share his experiences with me is, is huge for me. Right now I'm 9-0. After I fought my last fight, Dana White came out and said I'm number one contender. So I'm number one contender and I expected to fight Anderson Silva for the championship. And I'd love to see him get the chance with Anderson Silva, man. I think he wins that fight. What Weidman carries with him is the belief in himself that he's better than everybody else. And you couple that with technique and strength and all the other attributes, he's a force to be reckoned with. Long Island and the Sarah Longo fight team are home to another UFC middleweight, Costa Filippo, who left his home country of Greece to pursue a professional boxing career before making the move to MMA. Ray Longo and Matt Serra, they took me in, like a big family over there. Uh, they welcomed me. Matt worked with me a lot with my ground game, and Ray worked a lot of my kicks. I mean, from the boxing background, I had the punches down, but uh, with my kicks I had a little issue. Costa is now on a four-fight win streak in the UFC, and around the gym he shares his boxing expertise. On this day, with another rising UFC star, 
lightweight ally Aquinta, who is rehabbing after a recent knee surgery. I was gassed after the first minute. He just helped, helped me push through it. That's his uh, first day back. He got the okay from the doctor to punch, basically. But uh, he's a warrior. He's gonna do it. Ally Aquinta got his UFC recognition when making it to the finals of The Ultimate Fighter, a reality series for the UFC. The Ultimate Fighter was a great thing for my career. I went on the show, and with Ray and Matt's advice, I fought smart. It's a great start. But eventually, holding the belt is really what I want to be doing. There's a tremendous amount of work that I still have to put in. I know I'm capable of doing it. I think it's a possibility for me. It's up for grabs who has the most talented fight team in New York. But in New Jersey, there is no argument. American Martial Arts Fight Club, better known as AMA, has piled up a list of credentials in the sport. AMA Fight Club was a vision that I had back in 2005. Hey, Titan explode. Game plan, Soto, let me see something. And we really evolved it into signing, you know, over 10, 12 fighters to the UFC, as well as we have 50 active fighters that are competing on both an amateur and a pro level. And we work with the best coaches out there. We work strength and conditioning with Martin Rooney for Training for Warriors. It's one of the premier uh, fight clubs in the entire world right now. There's so many different fighters that are coming out of here and fighting in the UFC. The Miller brothers, Jim and Dan, are the headline fighters and they have been on their fighting journey together, side by side. I grew up as a wrestler, wrestled a year in college at Virginia Tech. Never done anything with, with striking involved. It was different, and, and leading in my first fight, I wasn't sure if it was what I wanted to do, but uh, my brother Dan fought a couple fights before me on the card that night and went out and, and steamrolled his kid, and from that moment on, I was completely confident that it was exactly what I wanted to do. I don't think either of us are the best athletes going into the ring, but we both put a lot of work and a lot of time in the gym, part of our success. Atta boy. Good stay on him. Two for one. Go again. I attribute my success in this sport to having my brother there with me. There's a bond that you have with, with the guys that you train with, but there's just a little bit you know, tighter of a bond with, with me and Dan. The only differences we have are what bagel is the best to have a sausage, egg, and cheese on, you know? It's like, <laughs> he goes with, uh, with everything or uh, Asiago or something like that, but I'm, I'm all about the garlic. The Miller brothers are two of the first fighters to come here to AMA Fight Club that started our fight team, as well as my two first fighters that signed with the UFC. Another standout for AMA Fight Club is Charlie the Spaniard Brenneman, who also comes from a wrestling background. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Let him think he's super close, and then turn it on. A really good setting here, and, and everyone knows AMA through you know the Millers are normally the first people, and then they mention me. But to be honest, it's so much more than that. Everyone in here cares. Ultimately, we all want to be our individual best, but at the same time, we need each other for that to be accomplished. We have a great group of guys, great group of coaches. We have a, a great attitude. That's to, to help each other get better. These guys are my extended family. So, um, you know, I wouldn't be where I am today without the help of all the guys I have around me. Especially Pop. <laughs> Keeps himself, very quiet guy. You know, uh, never has a bad thing to say about anybody. That's how everybody should act. AMA is in the process of creating their own history. And Constantino knows. Their legacy will be defined in the cage. I really push the fighters during practice because I want to make sure that anything that happens to them inside the cage has already been done to them tenfold here in the room. For the purpose of the drill, striking's allowed. Hammer fist the face, give them some volume. Use the wall, run them up into the wall. Pull them out, beat them up, make it hard on them. In and out fast, in and out fast. Turn around, touch them up, go. I want my fighters to be in the best possible shape, to have the best possible game plan, and I want them to execute the night of the fight. You know the jab is coming, start timing it with that back lever kick, start timing it with a front kick to the body, take out the front leg, and work your angles. The only thing that I ever want my fighters to worry about are training and fighting, and me and my team and my staff, we handle the rest.
Got a boy. Good. Two down the middle. Wow. Miller is now the sixth ranked lightweight in the UFC. And AMA has been instrumental in him mastering the many disciplines of mixed martial arts, especially his stand up and striking. had my leg kicked maybe 30 times hard. I told Jim last week, no more of that, <laughs> you know? And, uh, you know, you can only hold it for so long and he just catches me with a good one, you know? It's uh, raw meat, it feels like. That's the way to finish each round. It's been incredible to see his development and how far he's come. His kicks, his punches are just becoming much more devastating. It's about becoming the champion. I don't just want a shot at the title, I want to take the title and hold the title until the day I decide that I'm done with this sport. Jim is not the only fighter in the area with dreams of being crowned the champion. Some New York Red fighters know the feeling of reaching the pinnacle of the sport. But no fighter, no matter how historic, has had the opportunity to enter the cage in the Mecca. My dream fight is to Fight in New York, fight in Madison Square Garden. My goal is to get that championship belt and hold on to it for a long time. There's no quitting on us, you know, like uh, if I don't see myself fighting in Madison Square Garden, for sure I'll see my son. If I don't see him, I'll see my grandkid. Coming up this season on MMA in New York. This is where we are right now. Yeah. You don't like I'm a nurse, so I work at night, so I just got out of work. And we're gonna release it. There it is, right? I mean, it, it feels like the pain moved, but holy sh I'm more or less obsessed with home brewing right now. You know, you do some yard work and have a beer that you made. It just means a little bit more and tastes a little bit better. What Dan and his wife have gone through is just overwhelming. People don't know that. My nephew is a tough little SOB. <laughs>